who are you? How would you describe yourself and define yourself? I'd like to talk about Gregor in the third person. Well, Gregor is a contemporary artist that just discovered that he could sculpt about three years ago. Uh, after a divorce, he promised himself that he would do something great, and uh, this is part of the big major picture of the plan of life so far as we know it. So what exactly happened? Um, people make promises to themselves that they're going to do something, and uh, a lot of times that they don't. So I got rid of my television, and uh, now I just concentrate on art 100% every day, every moment that I can breathe. Neoclassical, contemporary folk. And what exactly have you done? Um, I've been investigating giant iron and metal steel sculptures. Um, uh, in a contemporary approach to uh, uh, some ancient influences and uh, legends and uh, more of a neoclassical uh, influence in a contemporary, uh, it's a definitely heavy American influence, uh, recycled materials that um, uh, lend themselves to the vision that I have uh, established that I'm trying to create. Uh, and so I search for things that look like ribs and heads and arms and spinal columns and piece them all together little by little and then I can come and build what is in my head. So if people come to the galleries at the Yukon Library, how would you tell them what to expect? Um, well, sort of be blown away by the size and the finish of the pieces that I like to think that um, you, there's a lot of uh, imagination that you can use with them, but I try to steer you in the direction that I want you to go. You use um, existing or Almost found parts. Almost 100% recycled found objects and found parts. It's, um, instead of letting them rot in the junkyard and just turn into rust, and uh, they've, it's already had its time. It's repurposed into something that's unexpected and whimsical, maybe. And, uh, maybe unexpected of something that started out as a front end for a bucket loader turns into a ballerina dancing on lily pads. It's okay. What's the most gratifying thing that's happened to you as a result of doing this? Gratifying or surprising? That you never Just could have predicted. that I can repeat it. I'm not a one-hit wonder. I've, I've learned of that about myself. Is that, that I've built the first piece and I, can I top this? Can I, build, can, I, can I stay at the same standards that I'm, that I'm expecting? I'm very competitive and I don't want to put something out there that I don't feel proud of mm -hmm. or feel that it's a wow factor. Mm -hmm. So I think that the most surprising thing is that and, and my lust for it is still there, is that I still have the same drive that I had when, from the first piece. When you're in the studio, as we are now, how do you feel with a torch in your hand? Like home. Like, I don't, I just want to set up a cot over here and dust it off at night and wake up and start again first thing in the morning. It's, sort of like my cathedral, this is sort of like my, my church, this, this art is my church. And my whole life revolves around that and trying to influence other people to maybe investigate art and enjoy art as much as I do. Is that what you're hoping to inspire people 
What do you mean? Is that the takeaway message, or is there one after people see your work? The takeaway message, should, I just want it to be, wow, this is great. It doesn't have to... Some of it sends a political message, some of it sends a religious message, some of it sends a, a message about life, but mostly I just want people to be influenced about the wow factor and then how their, imagine, how their imagination comes to life and how that imagination influences the way that they view the piece.